Mr. Klein here, and we are talking about Newton's third law of motion. It's something you're pretty well familiar with. Uh, it involves rockets and guns and big body checks and shoves and cars crashing and stuff like that. So we're going to be talking about the physics behind what you're seeing in this image right here of this rocket going up in the air and coming back down. So let's go ahead and let's get started. Now, Newton's third law of motion, rather, is probably the most well-known. It's the easiest one to, to talk about. It involves how forces act in an object. Now, according to Newton's third law, all forces act in pairs, have the same amount of force, and act in the opposite direction of each other. So whenever we define Newton's third law of motion, it's, it's this right here, which you're probably already reciting in your head. For every action, there's an equal and opposite react. Now, there is an important point that you need to know about Newton's third law before we move forward. It's important to know that the actions actually don't act on the same object. So they don't cancel each other out. Whenever we talked about Newton's second law, you talk about net forces. If the net force equals zero, the object isn't moving. So they can't act on the same object because if they all act on the same object, they would cancel each other out and there would be no motion. So as I said, the net force doesn't equal zero. As a result, the object is able to move. So let's go ahead and let's fill out our graphic organizer. If actually, we're filling out half of it right here. So you're probably going to have to pause the video for a while in order to write everything down. Newton's third law of motion. For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. That's kind of like the definition for it. And there's three things that Newton's third law of motion involves. It's one is that all motion consists of pairs of forces. Okay, so there's always two of them. They act on different objects and the forces are equal in strength. So remember, there's always two forces. They're equal in strength. They are opposite in direction. And as a result, they act on different objects and cause, as a result, that causes the object to go in motion. So what we're going to do in our next section is we're actually going to look at some examples that talk about this right here. So you can go ahead and pause the video and get your graphic organizer filled in, and then we're going to move on from here. Okay. So Newton's third law of motion has plenty of examples in everyday life. And we're going to look at the fact that, you know, they occur in pairs, they don't act on the same object, and they're equal in strength right here. So for example, if you and your friend are on skates and push each other, you're both going to go in opposite directions of each other. In fact, let's look at our first example of a radical dude on his skateboard. Okay, as you can see, he moves forward. Well, the reason why he moves forward is because he pushes backwards with his shoe. Okay, see the shoe goes backwards. He skates forward. Now remember, the forces are equal, okay? The push forward is equal to the movement forward of the skateboard. However, the force of the foot pushing backwards is actually on the ground, ran the motion of the skateboard is moving forward. So as you can see, the forces don't act on the same object. Therefore, you can have movement. The next one is whenever you shoot fireworks or rockets or a gun being fired or anything like that, the rocket, for example, if you would shoot upward, it will shoot upward, the exhaust of the engine shoots downward, which we can actually look at this from a main gun from a tank round going off. As you can see, the propulsion pushed backwards and the rocket round move forward as it went forward. Okay, again, so here's the explosion. The gas is ex actually escaping out of the gun barrel. Okay, so it filled up the gun barrel and it pushed it outward, but it was left behind by there. Okay, so the propellant goes one way and then the round goes the next. The final example we can look at is when you paddle with a canoe. Okay, you go forwards by pushing the paddle in the water backwards. It's kind of the same thing as the guy on the skateboard, okay? So as you can see, uh, Mythbusters with their, uh, their canoe, okay, they're paddling backwards. As a result, they're moving forward. So what we're going to do in our next section is we're going to talk transition and talk about something that has to do with Newton's third law, which is momentum, and we'll do that in a second. Okay, so a real quick review of Newton's first law. If you remember, when objects are moving, they're hard to stop due to inertia in Newton's first law. Remember, Newton's first law says that an object will motion, will stay in motion, an object in rest will stay at rest unless an outside force acts on it. And remember, a force is just a push or a pull. But why do they have so much inertia, especially when they're in motion? Well, if you remember, that's because of the mass of the object. The more mass you have, the more inertia you have. And there's a measurement that is similar to inertia, but it only involves 
when an object's in motion, and it's what we call momentum, okay? You remember, like, a sports team, they're, like, piling on the points, and they're coming back, and it's like, oh, my God, the team has all the momentum in the game. Well, that's because it's, like, hard to stop that team because they just keep on scoring. Momentum's the same thing. It's essentially the property of an object in motion that makes it hard to stop. So it's kind of like this with this guy spinning basketball right here. It's going to keep on moving, Okay, and then whenever he stops it, he's going to have to, like, push against it in order to stop it. But the more mass this ball has, let's just say he's got, like, a really strong finger and he's, like, spinning a bowling ball. It's going to take more of a pushback in order to slow it down because it's got more momentum and moving with that. So let's go ahead and let's fill out the next part of our graphic organizer. Momentum is related to Newton's third law of motion. It's also related to Newton's first law, as you can see, and also Newton's second law. But it, momentum is essentially a measurement of how hard it is for an object to stop. In our next section, we're going to talk about a law about momentum that has to do with its conservation or the ability to lose or gain momentum, whether it's lost or gained at all. And we'll talk about that in the next section. Okay, so you may be asking what momentum has to do with Newton's third law of motion. You might be like, well, Mr. Klein, it kind of sounds like it has to do with Newton's first or second laws more. Well, here's the thing. When an action and reaction pair occur, momentum is transferred to one object to another. I mean, look at this. Boom, take that. Man, I wonder what she did to deserve that. Anyway, well, you know, as you could see, what happens to the momentum in that collision, which we'll talk about collisions in a second. So what happens to the momentum? Well, the total amount of momentum stays the same through the law of conservation of momentum. The conservation law of conservation of momentum says that when two or more objects collide, no momentum is gained or lost. In other words, it stays the same. So what happens is when objects collide, bam, momentum is actually transferred from the Florida State player to the Florida player, which is a shame because uh, go Gators. Anyway, let's go ahead and let's fill out our part of our graphic organizer with the law of conservation of momentum. It says that momentum is never lost. It's just transferred from one object to the other. Even though like something might come to a stop, you know, in a collision or something, it's not that the momentum is lost. It's like transferred and absorbed which we're going to talk about in our next section whenever we talk about the two major types of collisions. So what I want you to do is I want you to make sure your graphic organizer is written, and whenever you got that written down, go on to the next section. So we can all see that Newton's third law, it works whenever we have objects colliding, okay? So we generally divide types of collisions based on what happens to the kinetic energy during the collision, okay? So collisions can be things running to each other or, or, or you know, something as simple as kicking a, a, a minion, okay? So let's go ahead and let's talk about the types of collisions, and we're going to go ahead and move forward with this. So yeah, collisions are any time that two objects run into each other, and the two types are listed below, and we're going to go into this right here. Now, just a real quick note for teachers or anybody watching this, if you want to talk about impulse, this is not going to be in this part of the lesson. All we're doing is just talking about the two types of collisions. So the first one are elastic collisions. Elastic collisions are when the kinetic energy of an object in motion is transferred to another object without any loss of energy. Notice how I said transfer of energy, but we also talk about the transference of momentum in this case. Now you see this in a head-on collision whenever the objects bounce in back in the opposite direction to each other. Okay, they bounce into each other and then they bounce back. Momentum is conserved, okay? In other words, there's no momentum loss, but the energy is transferred between the objects. You can see this right here, okay? So it is a collision and it's elastic, so both players move backwards, even though there was that shove, but even though he was shoving, he was pushing back. We see Newton's third law. There's an action and an opposite reaction, okay? The action of pushing the guy from Greater Western Sydney and then Dustin Martin from Richmond going backwards. Okay, so you see that right there. Momentum is conserved. The energy is transferred to the player who falls over, but still some momentum is left over and he falls, pushes backwards. And as a result, the motion is in opposite directions because the forces are equal and opposite due to Newton's third law. That's a whole lot of physics I just said right there. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's fill in the first part of our graphic organizer on the types of collisions, elastic collisions. Okay, momentum is conserved, momentum isn't lost, it's just transferred along with the kinetic energy to the other object. The final type is, of course, inelastic collisions. 
That's when the kinetic energy of the object is lost when it collides with another object. However, the momentum is still conserved. So what ends up happening is a collision where one object moves and the other one doesn't and the energy is lost because the momentum goes into the second object. Now you see this when an object hits a stationary object like a car hitting the wall. The energy is transferred from the car but because the wall is so much mass, it can absorb the energy and not move. Therefore, the kinetic energy is lost. And again, momentum is conserved. It is just completely absorbed by the wall because it has so much mass, it, it's not going to move. Which we can see this with a high-speed car collision. Now, how fast do you say? Well, how about 200 kilometers per hour, which is like really, really fast. Boom! Okay, you want to see side view? Yeah, that that that's kind of fast. Yep, they're they're. There you go again. Let's watch this again as I talk about this. So it's an inelastic collision. Well, I mean, in theory, because there is some movement. So let's just assume that the, the concrete blocks don't move. Okay, the concrete blocks absorb because they have so much mass. They absorb all of the kinetic energy and the momentum is transferred to them and they don't really move. They don't really move anywhere near as much as whenever the car was moving at 200 kilometers per hour. Car crashes are also why things like airbags have to be taken care of because you want the momentum and the kinetic energy to be transferred slower because as you can see what happens at 200 kilometers per hour it's it's pretty intense but by increasing the time which the momentum and energy are transferred from like the the car to the wall and stuff the safer it is and it's easier for a human to survive so let's go ahead and let's wrap up our organizer right here and like let's write any elastic collision newton's third law of motion of course for every action there's an equal and opposite reaction the motion all motion consists of a pair of forces they're equal in strength and they don't act on other objects. Related to this is momentum. It's the measurement of how hard it is for an object to stop. And there's the law of conservation of momentum which says momentum is never lost. Now what do we mean by that? We can look at it when there's collisions, when two objects collide, when they bump into each other and momentum is transferred. What's also transferred is kinetic energy. And there's elastic collisions where they bounce into each other and then they bounce away. So momentum is transferred and they just keep on moving. Okay so the forces are going in opposite directions of each other and then there's inelastic collisions and that's when all of the momentum and energy and force is just transferred into another object and it doesn't move and the real world application to that is in car crashes that you want to develop safety features which the collision can actually last longer which allows for the momentum and energy to be transferred longer which means there's less force and there's less of an impact on the people in the car so there you go. That's your lesson. Hope you enjoyed it. And if, as always, you have any questions, please let me know. And thanks for watching.